So this is what we would call a PIVM, so a passive physiologic intervertebral motion, or PPIVM. So this is just a way of looking at segmental motion physiologically, where a passive accessory motion is going to be a motion that the patient is unable to create on their own, where a passive physiologic is designed to just replicate a normal physiologic movement, but only one vertebrae at a time. So these techniques and tests have been called into question for reliability purposes, which makes sense where you're having to palpate and having to feel movement. There's a lot of inner examiner disagreement. So you have to take these tests with a grain of salt. However, the reason that we would test these is if you were gonna be using a particular manual therapy technique, such as a lumbar rotation-based manipulation technique, and you wanted to target your force at a particular level that was most hypomobile, this can be a way of isolating the technique to that segment. So we'll talk more specifically about how you do that. But the first thing that you're gonna do is get the patient into a sideline position like so. And then you need to start palpating the bottom two vertebrae before you start creating motion. So to find the L5S1 inner space, spinous process inner space, you can use the iliac crest. To find the L45 inner spinous space, and then you would essentially just palpate down until you find your L5S1 um, inner space. So the trick with this is you need to have one finger at the L5-S1 interspace, and then you need to have your other finger at the L4, L5 interspace simultaneously. The reason that you wanna do that is because we're trying to move one segment at a time. So I'm gonna do that through flexing the hips. As the hips flex, I should feel, I should start to feel a gapping occur between L5 and S1. Now, as I continue to flex the hips, so if I start to do this, I need to put my hands underneath uh, the knees. And as I flex the hips, I can start to feel motion. As I feel the motion at L5-S1, I am trying to feel if movement starts at L4-L5. If I start to feel movement at L4, L5, that probably means that I have reached the physiologic limit of movement between L5 and S1. When that happens, I am going to then move my bottom finger to the L4, L5 segment, inner space, and then I'll move my upper finger, my middle finger, to the L3, L4 spinous process, inner space. I continue to flex the hips and I say, yes, I can feel movement between L4 and L5. I feel gapping and I'm waiting to feel movement now between L3 and L4 inner space. And I can continue that process all the way up the spine. So if I were to find that as I go up the spine, that I am feeling movement between L4 and L5, and as I keep going, I keep going. If I'm not feeling any movement starting to happen at this segment above, then I can move up and I can start to feel, oh gosh, I feel movement above that. And I felt motion below it, but I don't feel any movement happening here at L3, L4. So if that were the case, then I would say that's the hypomobile segment. So if I was going to perform a lumbar thrust manipulation technique, I would move, I would flex the L4, L5, S1. I had locked that out. I would move the L4, L5 until it stops moving. I lock that one out and I stop. So now I've got L4 or L5 and S1 and L4 and L5 physiologically locked out. Then from this position, I could set up, say, a lumbar rotation manipulation technique that would theoretically bias the force at the hypomobile segment. So that is going to be a
passive physiologic assessment for flexion. And we can use this as well for extension and side bending. A clinical pearl, if you're having a hard time managing the weight of the patient's legs, you can use a belt underneath their thighs and around your shoulder. Now the belt can take the weight of the legs for me. And now I can create the motion just by moving my body and I'm not having to deal with the weight of the legs with my arm. Just personal preference. Some people prefer using the belt. Other people are fine using, using the legs. And you can really deal with your arm position in any way that feels most comfortable to you. But that just becomes another option.